if you take a normal FM radio and tune it to a frequency where there is no station broadcasting, you'll hear some noise, like this. But if you do the same thing on a walkie-talkie, like this one for example, let me turn it on real quick, you don't hear any noise whatsoever, just complete silence. That's because this device is using something called a squelch, which happens to be what we're going to talk about in today's video. Now in this video I'll be using these walkie-talkies as an example, but this information applies to many other types of radio transceivers, not just these walkie-talkies, but it's nice and convenient so that I have something to hold and something to point at. Alright then, let's continue. Now on devices like this, it is usually possible to turn the squelch off. So on this one I can do that by pressing these two buttons. Oops. There you go. So as you can hear, when I do that, I will just get noise, just like I would on a normal FM radio that is tuned into a frequency where no one is broadcasting anything. Now essentially what squelch is, is it's a noise suppression system. So right now, this system is just receiving all of that noise, but it's just not playing it back. That's what squelch does. So essentially what this means is that the audio circuit, or let me just call it the speaker of this device, remains deactivated until someone actually starts transmitting a real signal with their own walkie-talkie. Only then will my speaker be activated and will I be able to listen to them. And so this system is based on signal strength. The noise that I'm receiving right now is very low intensity, right? The intensity of the noise is too low, or is below the threshold, as we call it, and therefore the speaker remains off. And then when someone starts transmitting a signal, and that person is not miles away, but like somewhere in this neighborhood, if someone starts transmitting a signal, that signal will have an intensity above the threshold and will therefore activate the speaker and so we can listen to that person which would be quite interesting, right? If someone started talking right now on this channel, they would be in the video. Now there is one problem with this type of squelch, and that is because it uses intensity or signal strength, it's not selective. So what, what exactly do I mean by that? Well, let's say you and I both have one of these. So I give you the second walkie talkie, here you go. Now we set our walkie-talkies to the same channel, so channel 2, so that we can now talk to each other, okay? Everything's just fine. And we don't get bothered by all this awful noise because the squelch circuit is doing its job. But now, some other random person, or more likely some group of people, starts using channel 2 as well, and they start transmitting on channel 2, and we will be able to hear their voices as well. And that's, of course, very annoying, because essentially it's noise to us, right? We don't, we're not interested in these other, what these other people are saying, unless we're actually actively spying on them, but we're not doing that here. So, to us, these people talking is just noise. Except, this type of noise won't be filtered out by our squelch, because it's above the threshold for signal strength. So it will activate my speaker and I will hear these people talking. So we need a different type of squelch here. Like we need a squelch that doesn't just filter out environmental noise, but also strong signals from other transmitters that we're not interested in. So here's a possible solution. Instead of using a squelch that uses signal strength to determine if the speaker needs to be activated or not, I'm going to install a new type of squelch that works based on an audio tone in the signal. So I'm going to be using a squelch that only activates my speaker if the signal that I receive contains a 150 hertz audio tone. And then from now on, you shall be putting a 150 hertz audio tone in every single signal, sig signal wow, that you transmit. That way, when you transmit a signal to me, it contains a 150 hertz tone, and so my squelch system will activate my speaker because the signal contains a 150 hertz tone. But if some other random person starts transmitting on the same channel, 
their signal will not contain this 150 hertz tone and will therefore be ignored by my receiver. And of course, you're also implementing that system on your side. This system is called CTCSS. Now, there are two important things to understand about CTCSS. First of all, usually you can't manually enter a frequency for this audio tone. So I just said, you know, I'm using a squelch that responds exactly to a 150 hertz tone. Um, on most devices that you'll encounter, you won't be able to enter to manually enter a custom audio tone frequency, but instead you select a certain number. So I believe the number goes between 1 and 38 for CTCSS. So you enter a number, so 1 or 5 or 10 or whatever, and then the device internally converts that number into the corresponding frequency. The other thing that you have to understand about CTCSS is that it doesn't make your communication private. Uh, some companies use different names for CTCSS-ish systems, uh, which contain the word private, and this is very misleading, because CTCSS, CTCSS, yeah, that's correct. CTCSS is not designed to encrypt your information or to prevent other people from listening to you. That's not what it's designed for, and that's not what it does. It enables you to ignore incoming signals transmitted by other people so that you don't get bothered by those. It's essentially a more advanced form of noise suppression that doesn't just suppress environmental noise, but also other people talking. It does not prevent other people from listening to you talking. So if I'm transmitting some information to you, if I'm talking to you and we're using CTCSS, other people could still have a plain vanilla walkie-talkie without CTCSS tuned into this channel and they could hear us. And they might be wondering what's this weird 150 hertz tone in the background, but they can still hear us perfectly fine. Now another system is called DCS, uh, which is the digital equivalent of CTCSS. So in this system, um, we're doing almost exactly the same, but instead of using a, a certain audio tone, we're using a certain digital code. So when you send, when you transmit using DC, DCS, um, it, the device transmits the sound of your voice and a digital stream of information which represents a certain code. Um, and based on that, the speaker on the receiving side will get activated or not activated if it's the wrong code or if it's no code at all. For DCS, there are 83 codes that you can use, which is quite a bit more than the 38 codes that you can usually use for CTCSS. So that's the advantage of DCS then, I guess. Um, and as far as privacy is concerned, it's exactly the same story. Using DCS does not prevent other people from listening to you it just prevents you from hearing other people that you don't want to be bothered by. So there you go. Now you know a little bit more about Squelch and the different flavours of it that exist. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.